Hello and welcome to Tuesday Wednesday News Day, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. You know, this one's a little late, but I actually delayed this week's episode one day for something, and I think you'll see why. This is one of the most jam-packed weeks of VR news that we've had in a long time, so buckle up, this one's gonna be wild, so let's just get right into the news. I usually like to start these off with something positive or funny but I'm gonna start this one with something that actually makes me a little angry. So if you've been in VR for a long time and you've specifically been on the Oculus side of things, you'll likely remember the game called Marvel Powers United. It's an Oculus Rift store exclusive, and I can imagine a lot of people actually got this game with their Oculus Rift back in 2018 because it was bundled with the headset. Me on the other hand, I actually bought the game. Thing is, the game is shutting down completely, like you just can't use it anymore. And here's what Oculus had to say, quote, we recommend that you delete the game prior to March 1st, 2021 to avoid dead space being taken up on your device." End quote. So this is a game published by Oculus that I bought and many people bought and were essentially just losing access to it. It's a dead piece of software now, and it would be more fair if the game was multiplayer only. The player base for the game is effectively dead. And it's not like I was gonna play the game anyways, but it does have single player functions and this idea of Oculus just revoking access to games that they published makes me feel like I rented the game, not bought it, and it's kind of garbage. And it makes me feel very weird about buying Oculus software in general. Now, this sort of thing happens to online-only games in the industry quite often. If the game's player base is dead, the developers will often shut down the servers and that essentially kills the game. But the idea that some Oculus software will just stop working one day and is completely unusable when I bought it is kind of BS. Something just feels weird here. It's like they're revoking access to a game that was purchased, asking people to delete it even. I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. So I guess rest in peace, Marvel Powers United. Moving away from Oculus for a second, Pimax has announced a brand new VR headset uh, again. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it feels like Pimax announces new headsets every three months or so, and I still have yet to get one in hand or seen one out in the wild. But this new one does sound pretty awesome, and it's available now, actually. This is the Pimax 5K Super, and it's kind of crazy. It has a resolution of 2560 by 1440 per eye and a diagonal field of view of 200 degrees. But here's the thing, it runs at a refresh rate of 160 to 180 hertz. Now that far surpasses any VR headset out there at the moment, and a high refresh rate is part of the reason why I love my index so much. So it takes that, adds a crazy field of view, and an even higher refresh rate, and you can order one now for a sleek price of $750 for the headset alone, or $1,250 for the headset, base stations, and index controllers. Also from Pimax is some improved software, although I don't know about either personally. Maybe I'll try and get a review unit if there's enough demand for me to cover Pimax more in depth. So. Pimax is cool. The Quest 2 is earth shattering for typical consumers, and the Index is still my personal go-to. But the reason this video was delayed today is because a VR headset was recently announced, and I'm not kidding you, it likely changes the entire industry moving forward. I have never seen a company be praised as much as Vario this past year, and that praise is due to last year's XR2 and VR2 that I've already covered, but the successor, the XR3 and VR three have been announced. Let me just guide you through this because your jaw might just drop and I think this is legit a sneak peek into the future of what more consumer oriented headsets might include within the next 10 years. And to be honest, this headset is kind of maybe sort of affordable if you have some deep pockets. I'm gonna touch on the VR3 first. This is the highest megapixel per eye headset ever made. The Quest sits at 2.3 megapixels per eye, the Reverb G2 at 4.7, and the Vario VR3 sits at 9.7. So the competitor isn't listed, but here's an example of just how clear things can look. And it's insane. 
But it's not just about clarity. The headset has 200Hz eye tracking, which it claims to be best in class, ultra leap, hand tracking, and automatically adjusting IPD that sets the headset up to be tailored perfectly to every user the second you put it on automatically. Now, in terms of the visuals, the headset has made a huge step up compared to the last model, the VR2, which previously had a very narrow FOV of just 87 degrees, while the VR3 has bumped up to 115 degrees. But the special thing about Vario is their bionic displays, which actually use more than one display to give the image. So the focus display is 1920 by 1920, and the context displays on the periphery is 2880 by 2720. And instead of using Fresnel lenses like we have in most VR headsets today at the consumer level, Vario uses the far more expensive but clear biconvex lenses. All of this technology makes for an expensive package, but also the clearest, most high-definition VR headset ever made. And you might be thinking, why do I even care if it's prohibitively expensive? And you're kind of wrong. But let me give some context. Vario's first headset, the VR1, was $10,000. Then $1,000 every year after that. The VR2 was $6,000. And let me remind you that these headsets had significant drawbacks, like weight and a very narrow IPD. And the VR3 is... $3,200. Of course, at the moment, you still need that annual support license, which adds another $800 per year, but the point is that these insane headsets that offer near retinal clarity are getting better and better, and also getting cheaper and cheaper, and quickly. Almost to the point where an extreme VR enthusiast could purchase this and be playing Half-Life Alex on it. And that's possibly the future of Vario. The prosumer market of VR is certainly there. Some people really really do want expensive, ridiculously powerful headsets, especially if it's this good and offers that much. But more exciting is when this technology inevitably does trickle down to the consumer level headsets. Peripheral displays that enable insane clarity, eye tracking, better hand tracking, automatically adjusting IPD, this is the future of VR. Just the price isn't. I also want to mention that this headset is SteamVR tracked natively and supports index controllers and vibe trackers and all SteamVR software natively, so that's a huge plus. More exciting for actual industrial applications though is the XR3, which undoubtedly offers the best mixed reality experience that money can buy right now, which is great for automotive, medical, and engineering purposes. It's inside out tracked, has almost real to life pass through quality with LiDAR built in, and here's an example of someone threading a needle through the cameras with the headset on. Road to VR makes a great point here. Imagine trying to do this with the Quest pass-through. Yeah, not gonna happen. Of course, this is a very high-end enterprise headset, but it looks amazing and likely is one of the most cutting-edge VR and XR headsets available. And I'm sure we'd all love to get our hands on one, but if you are interested in VR and its technology, just knowing that something like this exists is enough reason to get excited about the future of headsets. This technology will likely make its way eventually into headsets that you can actually buy in case this one never becomes available to consumers. But like I said, the prices are getting decent. But now it's time for a meme break! Kenneth, Mark, give me the Zuck. But you can follow up and tell me what that means and I'll, I'll, I'll try to try my best to do it for you. What, what's the whole Zuck thing? Z-U-C-C. -C. I, I haven't seen this before. <laughs> That's all, but for now, let's just get right back to the news. So I have covered brain-computer interfaces many times on this channel, and have actually tested a few out in videos like the Luxid Link video. Generally, this stuff is really limited, but it's still pretty fun. Especially if you're a Sword Art Online fan and you just dream of the possibility of full dive technology becoming real. Well, a company, OpenBCI, is creating the next step of actually attainable brain-computer interfaces in a device called the Gallia. So something like the Luxid Link, for example, only uses EEG data and is really limited to be honest. But this new Gallia uses a pretty crazy list of sensors from an EEG to an EOG, EMG, EDA, and PPG sensors. So you have data measuring signals from the brain, eyes, epidermis, and muscles, which obviously gives you a far better picture of what your brain is actually doing than the standard EEG like on the Luxid Link. And what will be done with all those 
photosensors? Well, let me give you a quote from the researchers. Human emotions and facial expressions, including happiness, anxiety, depression, attention span, and interest level, and use it to create more immersive content tailored to the individual, end quote. I've mentioned this before, but imagine a horror game that knows what scares you based on your emotional response or bodily response, and tailors the game actively to keep you on the edge of your seat the entire time. Or something a little nicer, a home environment like SteamVR Home that can shift based on your mood when you get into it. That's something totally possible, and I personally think that this is the next step for extreme immersion beyond just controls and higher resolution headsets. It's another dimension of game design that hasn't really been explored yet. Here's what the CEO of OpenBCI had to say regarding it. Quote, I believe that head-mounted computers integrated with human consciousness will drive the next major technology paradigm shift. Gallia is the realization of six years of research and development. We are providing the world with a playground for experimentation and development using multimodal biometric data in tandem with the next generation of wearable displays." End quote. So yeah, that's heavy stuff, but incredibly cool. And I'll definitely be covering more of it here. So we all have some problems with the way that Oculus and Facebook run some stuff, requiring Facebook accounts, shutting down perfectly good games, etc. But one guy from Facebook and Oculus that generally has our back, or at least it seems, is John Carmack. Well, it turns out he's been fighting to get Android apps running on the Quest and Quest 2. And in case you didn't know, the Quest actually runs off of Android, so it would be pretty easy to get normal Android apps functioning on the device. Of course, it would be flat applications within VR, not VR native applications, but it could open up so many productivity and entertainment options for the device. But it seems that John Carmack is losing the internal battle with Facebook to bring the Play Store to Quest. As we all know, the Oculus Store is a heavily walled garden with a pretty extreme denial rate of applications. And as good as Android apps would be for the headset, Carmack had this to say on Twitter, quote, I continue to argue for Android apps on the Quest, but so far, I'm not winning, end quote. So that's basically that. Although I would love to see Android apps just come natively to the Quest 2. I'd be able to use it for so many more things. But now it's time for question of the week. From Team Banana, what non-VR game would be perfect and fun in VR? I mean, there are a ton of flat screen games that would be amazing in VR. Just to think of a few, I think the gameplay loop of something like a Far Cry game is literally made for VR. A hero shooter like Overwatch would work really well if done correctly, and that's the kind of game I would want. And an open-ended narrative game like Red Dead Redemption 2 would be a dream, but the more I think about it, I think my dream flat game to VR would likely be a Team Fortress 2, so I guess TF3 VR. It would just work so well, and you don't even have to change that much. And you best bet, I'll be dropping some dough on those hats if it becomes a thing. And that's question of the week. Make sure to ask your own in the comment section below, and I may just answer yours next. I will be streaming after today's video on Twitch, so stop on by, it's always an amazing time. And join up in my Discord server for the best VR community on the planet. I just want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Benji, Biz, CPCJ79, Debonair Fab, Dented Melon, Fusion Oak, HCG Randon, KR, Chaotic, Lucas Risotto, Ron Zarelli, That Brock Guy, Very Evil Shadow, and Suu Side. I literally couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.